Welcome to Don't At, wait, At Me. There you go. But you can at me. Just go to Twitter, at Dan Dockage, and thanks for watching. Um, Today, we're recapping Monday Night Football. Today, we're talking about the Bills. Today, we're talking about Belichick. Today, we're talking about the college football playoffs. We're going to have some predictions with the great Jill Savage, and we're giving out players to look for and people to look for. But first, let's discuss MNF. Monday Night Football. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you, the wind was blowing. Hold you this yesterday. I told you yesterday that the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen have not been nearly as good as advertised. Remember back, oh, I don't know, at the beginning of the year, and they were the sexy pick, right? Hey, we're not going to talk about New England. Let's talk about Buffalo. I'm tired of the Ravens and the Steelers. Let's talk about Buffalo. Yeah? How's that working out for you? Josh Allen hasn't been very good. If Josh Allen was really good and worth the money he paid for, I'm not saying that he's not okay. I'm not saying that he can't win games. I'm not saying that he hasn't improved. But here's what you do as an elite quarterback, elite now. I'm talking top five quarterback. You go win that game last night. You just do. You don't go ahead and just play mediocrity. You don't. You don't play down kind of to the level of the competition. Now, make no mistake, seven in a row, New England's a good team. But you don't play to the elements. Great quarterbacks play great in moments like last night. I don't want to hear about the wind. I don't want to hear about the cold. You're in Buffalo for crying out loud. You're big, you're strong, you quarterback in Wyoming for crying out loud where it snows 365 days a year. And you can't play any better than you did last night? Don't at me, people. Don't at me. Don't tell me about, oh, my God, he's the next big thing. You become the next big thing when you prove yourself to be the next big thing. You don't become the next big thing by having the media look for somebody. Well, we're not going to talk about Tom Brady. Uh, No, we're not going to talk about Lamar Jack. Let's find it. Oh, Buffalo. That's what happens here. That's what always happens. You get the comeback guy, and that's Josh Allen. That's what I took out of yesterday, and don't get me wrong. Running the football is so in vogue these days. Look look at this. Three passes total, but you knew that already. Two completions for only 19 yards. You knew that. I mean, okay, fine. 46 carries, 220 yards, 22 yards. I don't want to short them two yards. For the New England Patriots, genius. If something's working, you stick with it. If a guy's hot in basketball, you get him the rock, baby. And that's exactly what New England did last night. New England didn't jackass around. New England didn't start doing something that wasn't working. New England said, all right, we've got this guard. And finally, ESPN figured it out last night. His name is Teddy Karras Jr. Jr., He was put in the lineup. We talked about him yesterday. He solidified the offensive line for the New England Patriots. He's the left guard. Well, where'd they run? Left side, left guard. Finally, ESPN put a graphic up of Teddy Karras Jr. Jr. You got to understand Jr. Jr. Teddy Karras Jr., a great football coach and a personal friend of mine, went to my high school, played at Northwestern, played in the NFL for a little bit. Teddy Karras Sr., his dad played for the Bears. Ted, uh, Alex Karras, his uncle's a Hall of Famer. Karras's have a long lineage of greatness in the NFL. Dad, Super Bowl. Kid, two Super Bowls. Don't at me, people. Sometimes you got to give credit where credit's due. And you got to talk about the offensive line. And you got to talk about the left side of the offensive line, which was anchored by Teddy Karras Jr. Jr., one of the all time great guys in football. You've never heard of him. That's why you come to me in the morning, because I'm going to tell you about people you've never heard of. Dan, why are you wearing a suit? I'm not wearing a suit. I'm wearing a jacket. Why am I wearing a jacket? Because I saw the show yesterday, and I didn't like how I looked. If I'm going to make fun of the slobs in the media, looking like slobs in the media, and I'm going to be an entertainer slash media member, I'm not going to look at like the people that I make fun of. Thus, I'm going to start dressing better. And the only thing I learned in college, there's two things I learned in college. One of them you just saw. 
Sit on your jacket, dummy. I majored in telecommunications. Sit on your jacket so you don't see these things up here on your shoulders. So I just did it. The other thing I learned was my social security number. I don't know why, but in college at Indiana, you always were giving out your social security number. What 18 or what 18 year old, 17 year old senior in high school knows his damn social security number? Those are the only two things I learned at Indiana University. But anyway, so that's why I'm dressed like this. But congratulations to the New England Patriots as they've taken over the AFC East. I don't think they're the best team in football. Frankly, I think the Colts are. And that's not me being a homer. I said this on my other show, the Noon to Three show in Indianapolis. Uh, This is going to sound really dumb. I absolutely think the Colts are a contender for the Super Bowl, but they got to get into the playoffs first. They'll play New England after a bye. Both teams have a bye. New England comes to Indy. Take it right now. Whatever number you can get with the Colts, uh, take it because they're going to beat New England in two weeks. 